good afternoon, parents. Very nice to have so many of you in the Zoom webinar. I'm Mrs. Fay, the principal, and today, Mr. Eric Chia, year head for upper primary, and myself will be sharing with you with regards to the primary five and primary six parents briefing. Next. This is the agenda for today. All right, first, I will do the welcome address, and then Mr. Chia will share with you about PSLE and other methods at C6 level. And lastly, you'll be interacting with the form and co form teacher. Just like to share with you that this is the new school leadership team. This year, Ms. Ng Peishan has joined us. You have read from the Keeping in Touch letter that she was formerly from Cedar Gold, and we welcome her into Peying family. So Mr. Rani and myself, I think you have seen us many times, so I will not introduce uh, much more about myself and Mr. Rani. I would like to share with you the school management team. So this first screen shows the year head as well as the assistant year head. Mr. Chia is the one right in the center. He's looking after all the children in primary five and primary six. These are the key personnel who are looking after the core curriculum in the school. And then these are the personnel for the IT instructional program. These are the level heads and subject heads, and they assist their HOD. In our school, we also have teacher leaders who look into the curriculum, pedagogy, and assessment. And this year, we have Mrs. Teresa Chiu. She just joined our family. To support children' well-being. We also have a team of delegated officers. The first one, our senior school counsellor. The next two, our special education needs officer. And lastly, Mr. Jonathan Fong, our student welfare officer. So they look after students' emotional learning needs. This is our new school position. We did a re -additioning last year and together with the teachers, members of the school advisory committee and some parents from the parent support group, we came up with a new vision, lifelong learners, leaders of character. So those of you who come into the school premise, you have also noticed that this vision has already been plastered on the school wall because we want to remind all students and all staff that we want to have this lifelong learning attitude and we always lead others with character. The school mission remains unchanged. It's about building character, about enriching life and stretching potential of everyone in the school. Core values also remain unchanged and this P-R-I-D-E, pride values are very familiar with our students and as well as the Asian community. So many times when they interact with alumni or parents or children who have already left the school, they will always tell me that Mrs. Pei, we remember paying primary for the pride value. So parents, I urge you at home, do talk to your children about the pride value as well. So we sing the same language and guide the children to have this value. School motto, wisdom to choose, Courage to do the right thing. These are our, our student vision outcomes. They have largely remained the same, but we have re looked at the attributes and I'm going to show you the refresh attributes. Our parents, I encourage you to take a look. These are our student vision outcomes outcomes that we envision every child to acquire or to have when they graduate from paying primary school. So let's take a look at one of them, engaged learner. We hope for everyone to show curiosity for learning so they don't just learn for grades or PSLE, 
but they enjoy learning and develop the student agency to learn for themselves, be a lifelong learner. Children learn to work with others respectfully, not to quarrel, not to raise their voice, take turns, taking responsibility for their own learning, especially that your child right now is in primary five and six. So we also urge parents sometimes to get your child to learn on their own, to remember their own spelling, to bring their own book, to bring their own t-shirt, to prepare their own meal, to really taking responsibility for their own life, okay, rather than keep doing things for them and because they're already 10 and 11 years old, and to encourage our children to think critically and communicate confidently. All right? So these are just some examples of the student vision outcome attributes that our whole paying community has come up with. And this guides us in the design of all the programs and processes that we have in the school. So again, just like the pride values, parents, I urge you to work with us. This is also in our school's handbook. Take a look and guide your children to have all these attributes. Some safety and admin matters reminder. Firstly, okay, we know that now it's Dawson Green and we do not need to wear any masks from 13 pet, right? But again, right, mask wearing is optional for your children. So if your children feel more comfortable in wearing masks, please go ahead. Please also ensure that your child bring a thermometer and it should be a working one, able to operate by battery. Now, if your child is unwell, parents, I will strongly urge you to let your child stay at home, okay? And let the child rest and not come to school. Now, parents gateway, now we have noted, I'm very happy to say that I think almost all the primary five and six parents, you're really on board parents gateway. So I urge all of you, right? Please check parents gateway regularly. Okay, sometimes there are no announcements because you did not update the web. All right, or the app, sorry, the application. So in case you did not receive any announcement the whole year, right, that means your PG app is not updated. So after today's briefing, please go and check whether your PG app is updated. So for our school, all the letters to parents, consent form announcement will be all via the PG. Now, in addition, okay, I just want to remind all of us, okay, all parents shall receive a reminder to fill up your individual student details form. This year, MOE has gone digital. We no longer issue hard copy to parents to reflect the health status of the children. So parents, please remember to update your child's health status. Okay, and every time when there's a new update, please inform my teacher. Okay, because we do not go in regularly to check whether there's any updates. Now next, we notice that our children love to cycle to school. But as a principal, I'd like to share with you that the traffic can get very hazy, especially at block 806 to 808. All right? It is not heavy at the bicycle track, but it's extremely heavy with cars and other pedestrians at block 806 to block 808. So parents, I really urge you, please ask your child to cycle safely. Don't eat. Wear safety helmets and protective gears. Now, if your child is cycling to school, please also ask the child to scan the QR code so we know who he or she is and we can also educate your child. Road safety. For parents, some of you who drive, now please drive carefully and reduce your speed when you enter the school because this is the school zone. Please cooperate with my staff. Right, whether it's outside the school, the security guard, or within the school, and let only your child alight at the designated door of choice. Parents, we also notice that quite a number of students, and sometimes even parents, jaywalk at this junction outside the school. So parents, I urge you, these role models for our students. As you can see, this is a four-way traffic, right? There are many cars here, especially from 7.15 to 7.30. Please guide your child to use the pedestrian crossing. In fact, there are two pedestrian crossings 
One is near Naval Base Secondary School and the other one is nearer to Block 808. So please guide your children so that without your presence, they will also learn how to cross safety. Home school partnership. Again, we want to work with you very closely to develop your child. So I hope parents, I know that some of you PSLE is looming above your head because your child's in primary five and primary six. So I urge all of you, don't just think about PSLE. Remember, your child is only 10 year old, 11, and some of them just turned 12 year old, they have a childhood. So please help them to enjoy learning and focus on the learning journey. Do not compare them with others. Give them time and space to deepen learning, to ask questions, to own their learning, because we want to develop them, not just for secondary school, but to develop the disposition for life. So, please work with us for your child's mental and physical well-being. When we spoke to children, we noticed that some of them they sleep very late, all right, and they are not following some routine, desired routines for young children. And sometimes they are still very dependent on adults to solve their problems. So, parents, I'm speaking to you this way because your child is in primary five and six, they are the seniors of the school. Please work with them for them to be independent. And with that, it builds their lifelong learning attributes. This is a shout out to all of you, okay? The colleagues, my colleagues in the school, my staff in the school, yeah, many are like you, they are also parents. Some of them are even grandparents. They are also somebody's son, somebody's wife, somebody's husband, okay? So I urge all of you, please give us time to respond for simple matters. We'll, take, we'll try to respond within three days, but if it's very urgent matter, we'll try to respond straight away. For things or for issues that are more complicated, if we need to investigate, we'll take about 7 to 21 days. So parents, sometimes we know it's very convenient of you to call the general office, to class dojo, my teachers. I hope you understand that the teachers have lessons. And sometimes they're also out for courses. So please give us time to respond. Sometimes it's just impossible for us to react or to respond to you within the day itself. So please, Protect the teacher's personal time, contact them during school hours only, and via email or the school phone. Parents support group, I believe some of them are listening in here as well. We really want to thank the parent support group for working with us closely to design programs for the students. So parents, it's never too late. If you are keen to join PSG, please scan the QR code here. Volunteer your time, volunteer your talent, and volunteer your thoughts. We look forward to your support. Now, if you are not able to capture this scan code, not to worry. You can check in with your form or form just later. So with that, I pass the time to Mr. Chia. Mr. Chia will talk about P5, P6 level methods, PSLE scoring, choosing secondary school, as well as direct school admission. Mr. Chia, the time is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Pei. Right, good afternoon, parents. I'll be going through with you the following items. I'll show you the level programs, PSLE scoring, which I think some of us have uh, been asking our form teachers. I'll also be sharing with you on the process of choosing our secondary schools and this uh, feature that we have in our primary schools going up to secondary, which is our direct school admission. So, I'll start off with sharing with you the, our level programs that we have. Now, uh, Mrs. Pei mentioned earlier, I think we heard in the press, right, we're going to Doscon Green. And starting from this year, at the start of the year, we have actually uh, have a lot of activities going on. I think you'll be receiving a lot of PG messages from the school. Your children have been excitedly telling you about all the programs that they are engaged in, enrichment programs. Uh, they are going out to have uh, learning journeys. There's a camp coming out for the primary fives. Okay? And then in the classroom, setting, we have started with all the uh, group interaction activities. Uh, they are able to also interact and play at recess times. So these are the uh, activities that we will be resuming this year, right, for primary fives. 
the P5 camp is just coming up on Monday. I know you're very excited. The children are also very excited. It's a time for them to uh, enjoy an independent time with the teachers out in the wild, enjoying how it is like to have independent living for three days, two nights. And perhaps there's a time for us parents also to take a break. Okay. So we'll be learning journeys coming, as I mentioned. And we we'll also be introducing, reintroducing the Safe Safer program. Over the last two years, two and a half years, the Safe Safer program has uh, been put on hold because of the uh, COVID management uh, uh, procedures at the pools, at the uh, sports complexes. So we'll be restarting the Safe Safer program for the primary five, that's in term three. And for the primary sixes, they will also continue the Swim Saver program. So by the time they reach secondary one, they will have basic skills of uh, swimming. And for the P6s, not to worry, all these will be conducted post-PSLE. So parents, uh, we urge you to continue to have your children come to school even after the PSLE is over in October. We have some children in the past years, they have the feeling and the idea that uh, after PSLE, you know, everything is uh, stopped. Well, after PSLE, learning continues. We have classroom activities for them. They will learn to, uh, they will learn how to work with their peers. They will be engaged in uh, e-book activities. They also have a learn to bowl program put in for them to learn other skills to interact with uh, each other. You have heard of this uh, removal of SA one examination. So starting from this year, um, you will realize that uh, in a letter to parents, you send out at the start of the year. We mentioned about these uh, weighted assessments in place of SA1 examination. So there will be a couple of weighted assessments through the year. So this is for the primary five, primary six, right? We have WA1, WA2, three end of year paper. And for the P6s, right, they will have in term three their prelim examinations and then moving on to their PSLE in term four. So we do have uh, parents who have expressed concerns regarding how then am I going to know and uh, keep up with whether my child's learning yeah, is uh, progressing. So we have our teachers to uh, interact with you, to communicate with you. It's a partnership. So we will really urge you to uh, have constant communication with your child's uh, form teachers to find out more about the learning disposition of your children, uh, how else you can help them because every child learns differently. Every child progresses at a different pace. We will also be having um, uh, formative assessments in the class to keep check on the children's learning. And the subject teachers will be updating you as these formative assessments are in progress so that you have a good idea of how well your child progresses, how well to support your child's learning. I'll now move on to the changes in the PSLE scoring and the S1 posting systems. Um, you have been hearing this in the press uh, last two years. This is going to be the third year, 2023 will be the third year PSLE where we'll be using the AL scoring system to uh, check on the students' uh, progression to secondary school. So I'll be covering on these uh, following items on the scoring system and the S1 posting system and how to choose schools and how to make sense of the PSLE scoring ranges. But not to worry parents, I know the slide may appear to be very wordy and some information may be too small if you're looking at a mobile phone. We will be sending this uh, information slides to all parents via Parents Gateway. So you will be able to assess this information right, uh, and read it at your own uh, time. So the idea of the PSLE is uh, used as a checkpoint. So it's at the end of primary school, at the end of six years, for us to take stock of the learning that our children have. And the PSLE is also a means of determining how to post them to a secondary school based on their um, learning progress, based on their skills and talents. So the new AL system aims to reduce the fine differentiation. That's why you'll find that uh, we're going to the AL scores rather than a whole uh, range of uh, two, 300 points. Okay. It is meant to recognize their achievement level. So that's, it is meant to reduce the kind of competition between peers, you know, oh, I've scored one mark higher than you and so on. So it goes by academic ranges. And it is also to enable us to 
choose schools based on our children's strengths, our children's interests and abilities. So how does the PSLE scoring work? Right? So you would be seeing in the child's, your child's report book last year, okay? for the P6s, you'll see their AL scores. The P5s, uh, you'll be seeing these AL scores uh, this year. So what the makes sense of the AL scores, it goes from one all the way down to eight. And uh, those are the mark ranges. So if your child gets a mark range within that uh, band, then they will be accorded uh, achievement level accordingly. So for those students who are taking foundation-based subjects, uh, their AL scores will go in terms of uh, A, B, and C, and they'll be translated over to a standard equivalent of six, seven, or eight. So how does these AL scores work uh, at the PSLE? So if you refer to AL scores on the site for reference, if let's say we are looking at a child that has scored an AL4 for English, an AL4 for mother tongue, AL2 for math, AL3 for science, uh, the child will end up with a PSLE score of 13. So the L scoring of 13. And what will happen then? We will look at the table extreme right. So a 13 PSLE score will enable this child to be emplaced within the express course of study in secondary school. So the child can choose um, to go to schools in the area nearest to your house or schools that have um, activities and programs that matches your child's interest and take the course of study for Express. Okay? And you'll go on, you have all the other score ranges available there, Express, NA, all the way down to NT. I would like to uh, highlight that um, there are some parents who also ask about passing marks. Okay, So um, the passing mark we, we have this idea that passing mark must be 50 marks for examinations. To so go up for PSLE, we are encouraging the children to look beyond grades. There's no passing mark of 50. However, based on the achievement levels, whatever achievement level they can attain for the subjects, they are able to be in place in the secondary school. Now, if you look at the last uh, box on the bottom right, there's this uh, um, AL7 mentioned there. So, I think the children are referring to passing marks in terms of an AL7 grade. So we need a minimum of achievement level seven in English and mathematics if they are to progress to secondary school. Okay, um, just to also highlight at the bottom there, I think some of us have heard in the press about the subject-based bending. When the subject-based bending information is uh, available later in the year, we will have another briefing again for the P6 parents to update you on how the uh, SVB from P6 to Set 1 will work out. The next one is on the higher mother tongue language. So my child wants to take higher mother tongue in secondary school. How am I able to get my child to study for higher Chinese, higher Malay, or higher Tamil language if my child is not offering higher Malay, higher Chinese, higher Tamil right now in primary school. The ability to take the subject will be dependent on the overall score of the child. So the child gets an AL score of eight for all the four subjects. The secondary school that he or she goes to will offer them the higher mother tongue language option. Alternatively, if the child gets an AL1 or AL2 in mother tongue, your child can also be offered the option of taking higher mother tongue in the secondary school that they are in. So the current subject-based bending that is happening in secondary school allows for your child to offer a subject at the secondary school that matches the achievement level that they have at the PSLE. So let's say that um, uh, my child is posted to the normal academic course, and my child does very well in, say, English language. My child has an AL5 or better for English language, but the overall four subject scoring is such that my child is posted to the normal academic course. I can opt for my child to take English at the express level with the other subjects at the NA level. So this is how it works out, right? If I'm, for this case here, Mathematics is at AL5. I'm posted to a school to take my secondary school education at the NA level, but I have AL5 for math, 
I can take express level mathematics. So the full subject, full subject based bending that is going to come to us very soon, right? Um, aims to give children greater ownership of their learning, right? Provide them with opportunities to interact. So you, they will not be uh, you know, in classes of just express, NA or NT, but they'll be spread across different classes. I will give you more information on this when we get the uh, rest of the information later in the year. So P6 parents, uh, we will give you another briefing on the SPV going up to secondary one. So the changes that's coming from SBB, there's going to be a removal of the express course and A and T courses. Your children will be in mixed form classes. There will be opportunity to have common curriculum subjects. And also moving on for the P6 uh, cohort, by the time your child reaches um, their SEC four year, the common national examinations will be in place. Uh, we'll have more information on that when your child reaches there. It's still another four years to go. Okay. So the timeline for the subject-based spending is as follows. We're now at 2023. So from 2024, we know that there will no longer be these courses. We will wait for the information to come. And in 2027, there will be a common national examination, Singapore national examination to take in place of the current uh, GCE O levels. So after the PSLE exams are over, we are going to go to secondary school. So how does the posting system work then? With the, all these AL scoring, I only have eight points to look at for, all, for each subject versus in the past. So how do I get my child into the secondary school? So the students will still have six choices. So after the results are out, your child will be given an option of six choices to make and choose choice one to choice six. Similarly, the, the posting criteria will be as such, is by your PSLE score, is by school order. Now, I would like to emphasize that the choice order that you make for your child matters in how your child be posted to the secondary school. I'll explain more in the next slide. The choice order is one of the factors. Other than choice order, the system will post the child and give priority in the following order, citizenship, choice order, and where there's a tie, they will do a computerized balloting. So let's look at an example, right, of five children who have uh, the following scores. Okay, we have the uh, first child with 16, second child with 20, and then 20 for the next four children. Okay, so what happens when they are going for the secondary school posting? And there's only one place left in the particular secondary school that all of them have selected. Okay, so the first child, right, having the better score and have having selected this particular school, she will be posted into the school of her choice. The next four children having the same score with only one place left, right? So what is going to happen then? Okay, we'll go into the first tiebreaker. So since Brian and Mary are Singapore citizens, they will have the priority to enter the school. The other two children, right, will then be considered for their next school, the next choice. So we have Brian and Mary with priority to enter into their choice. However, there's only one place left in the school. So how will that work out? So then we will then look at the scores of the child who have applied for that school. So since uh, Brian has applied for the school and placed it as first choice, whereas Mary has applied for the same school but has placed it as second choice, then therefore Brian will get the last place in the school, whereas Mary will not be posted to the school. And now this is a situation where both Brian and Mary have the same achievement level score of 20. Now what if Mary has an achievement score of 16 and Brian has an achievement score of 20. How would that work out then? Mary, if Mary had placed this particular school as her second choice and Brian has placed it as the first choice, Brian would still go in ahead of Mary, despite the fact that Mary has got a higher 
has got a better achievement level score. So we have had um, uh, instances where we hear of students uh, in the last year in uh, different schools appealing to go to the secondary school to go in because they found out that, hey, my friend has 16 points, my friend is in this school. I have 15, but I'm not in this school. Why is this so? Because they didn't put that school as their higher choice order. So the choice order does matter. The child had placed this particular school as their fifth choice. The other friend with a lower L score had placed it as their second choice. And so they look at choice order, all those in the second choice gets identified. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So PSLE score ranges for individual secondary schools. Okay. Um, if you have a camera, you want to take a picture of the uh, QR codes, you may do so. However, uh, I'll be sending these QR codes to you over the parents' gateway so you can assess them. The school finder tool will be replacing the uh, secondary school choosing booklet. I know some parents have been asking for this booklet where we have the uh, schools listed, the cutoff points, the indicated cutoff points, and where to go to. So this booklet is no longer uh, produced and distributed to students. In place, we have the uh, online version. So we'll be sharing with the children how to go about uh, identifying and finding the schools. They'll be sharing with you when they go home. Okay. Uh, another thing to take note of is this uh, idea of the cutoff point. Now, the cutoff point for any particular year is not predetermined. We have uh, students asking us, oh, the cutoff point for school A was uh, uh, 14 for last year. So I have uh, 16. Can I go into this school? Um, it is not based on the cutoff point that you hear. The cutoff point actually is derived from the score ranges of the students who have applied for that school and had successfully been admitted in that particular year. Okay. So let's look at the uh, what this score range thing will look like. So when you go in to look at the uh, website, okay, you will find two ranges of scores there. Okay, The left-hand column will be the PSC score of the first student. And then the next range there will be the score of the last student that has posted in. And hence, uh, they call that the cutoff point for that particular year. Cutoff point is only known at the end of the entire posting exercise for the year. Okay? So my child is taking higher Chinese in PSLE this year. Uh, what can that do for my child? Okay. So higher Chinese language can be used as a uh, advantage point if your child is applying to go into SEP schools. So SEP schools, you are applying in and you have higher Chinese, that will be used as a priority uh, admission. Okay. So if you look at the uh, range that is given, you will identify the PSLE score and a higher Chinese grade of the first student posted in. There will be a D indicated there. Okay. And the color point is also indicated. How do I choose the schools with my child then? There are so many schools to choose from. My child has got uh, these L scores. These schools have all these L scores. So, you can use the AL scores as a point of reference, but it's important to also look at whether the school is a fit for my own child, whether my child has CCAs at the school that you know, he or she uh, wants to take part in. Um, does the culture of the school match with uh, my child's uh, interests? Um, are there programs that the school has that my child is interested in? Of course, we look at distance as a factor as well. Okay. So if your child has got interests and talents which are very unique to what the school also has, you can also then consider the direct school admission secondary okay, as an alternative to go into the secondary school. So to prepare for the S1 posting exercise, the six options you can use. When you use the six options, it's important to also have at least two to three schools where your child's PSLE score is better than the uh, cutoff point of that particular school. We have had children who had, say, a AL score of uh, 12, and they have selected all the six schools with AL score of 11 and 12. 
Now, the cutoff point is based on the students who admitted the previous year. In this current year, there may be more students with, say, an AL score 11 applying for the six schools that you are looking at, and you may not even get a place there if you are AL score of 12. So that is bringing it very risky at the level. And what then ha happens is your child will be posted to a school near to your house. So um, do use the six choices wisely. Okay? Choose schools that your child will uh, flourish in. Choose schools that benefit your child's interest. Um, I know some of us um, have dream schools that you know, we want to go to, and we, we tend to choose schools based on what we as parents want, but do have that communication with your child, which, which school, which program uh, matches your, scout, your, your child's uh, strengths. And then when they are happy and they go to the school, they will really enjoy themselves there. My, I have three children. They, my, my eldest two are in secondary schools that they like to go to. They enjoy it so much. <laughs> I don't see them until 5 p.m., 6 p.m. each evening because they are basically, how would I say, sold to their school. Okay? They enjoy it so much there. They are going for all the activities. They have support from their friends and their teachers in learning the curriculum. Okay? Ranking your child's uh, preferred school higher. Okay? So if you want your child to get into that particular school, put it at a higher choice, you'll be considered. So these are the um, materials that will be coming your way over Parents' Gateway. Uh, we will inform the children, do check your Parents' Gateway. You will have all these soft copies coming in from October up to December. Uh, results will be released somewhere in the uh, first week of the December holidays. We will give you details of the dates as we get it. In December, the posting results will be out somewhere around the week of the 20th December. So some tips for us where we have a com conversation with our children, be open and listen to what uh, our child wants. Of course, we need to balance with um, whether their choices are sound and whether there could be a better option for them. Okay? Children, if you're listening in, uh, do listen to your parents' uh, views as well. So it's not just about where you want to go, but sometimes your parents would have already done some uh, you know, research on the schools that may suit your uh, abilities. Have conversations with your child parents to find out more about what they want. They are growing up, they are P5, P6 ready. Um, they start to have uh, uh, conversations with their friends and they know what they want. They expect certain things in their future. Okay? Also manage our expectations and not project our expectations on our children. You know, uh, or I, I want you to get uh, 80 marks, otherwise, you know, uh, that's not a good mark. Look at what our child can achieve right now and then slowly increase the targets for our children. And if they come back with a certain score, um, I know as parents, we are disappointed the child comes back with a low score. I've had children who tell me, I'm very frightened to go back to my score. I've got 91. I'm supposed to get 95 marks. So if 91 is not good enough, then the child gets fearful, the child cannot go home and show the paper because it is not to the expectations. So affirm your child regardless of the effort, I mean, regardless of the marks they get because they are putting effort to secure that particular mark range. It is an effort to even go in and, you know, within that time, do the paper and put in your best. So whatever your child comes back with, affirm them for their effort they have done. I'm sure they will feel um, uh, bad about not achieving their targets, but there is always another round. Okay? We can always do better the next round. Right? So um, the PSLE microsite, uh, I'll be sharing with you. You can find out more about the details of PSLE and uh, scoring. Okay? So these are the other resources which I'll also be sharing with you over Parents' Gateway. Okay? So I'll touch a little bit more of uh, the direct school admission. So direct school admission exercise, we have uh, heard about uh, this uh, frequently. I would like to clear some misconceptions about, mis about this uh, direct school admission exercise first. The direct, direct school admission exercise is not a shortcut to secondary school without taking PSLE, okay? Um, we have had a few students in the past 
who have the idea that if I apply for DSA, then immediately I go to SEC 1 and I don't need to take SEC, I don't need to take the PSLE exams anymore. Uh, that's not true. You still have to take the PSLE examinations to determine your uh, exit point in terms of which course of study you're going to take. Okay? Because the school that you're going to apply for under the direct school admission exercise has got a certain uh, subject range that you are going to study in. And if you don't have the course that, uh, that your child is eligible for, then your child may not get the DSA. Okay? So then what is this DSA for? It is for schools to identify your child to enter in ahead of their results based on their skills and talents. So you, the list you see here are basically a big range of schools in Singapore that your child can apply DSA for. You can apply for DSA into independent schools, government schools, okay? IP schools, integrated program, right? Where your child will progress from SEC 1 all the way to JC2, bypassing the O-level examinations. So they will go through a six year of uh, uh, learning programs which ends with an A-level. Then there are schools that have the International Baccalaureate Program, IB program, IB schools, right? There are sport, there's a sports school, SOTA, which focuses on the sporting talents, the uh, other talents of your child in terms of the visual arts, literary arts, performing arts, okay? So is DSA secondary the right path for my child? So, I then need to look at my child. Does my child have talents which the school that I want my child to go to, you know, is looking out for? Oh, my child cannot play a sport, so therefore he has no talent. Well, talents are not just based on sporting talents. Sometimes the school looks out for children with the ability to lead. The school looks out for children who are able to uh, uh, perform in terms of the acting performance, drama. The school may look out for children who have good debating skills, they are able to converse, they are able to uh, take part in school debates. So the skills and talents of a child varies. It's not so much of, you know, uh, my child can play a sport only, then you go for DSA. Leadership as well. In paying, our children are given opportunities for leadership development, right? Your child has opportunities to be either leaders in the classroom, leaders in the respective CCAs, prefects and JSLs. Okay, so these leadership skills they have, they can use that as a platform to apply for the direct school admission under leadership as well. Right? Those in the, the uniform groups, right? if they are in the Red Cross or the Brownie CCA, they can think about applying for DSA for these uniform groups in secondary schools. So what that basically means is that if your child is um, able to commit to that particular DSA, then your child goes to that school, applies for it. The school identifies your child as a right fit for the school, having that um, uh, talent area that can contribute to the secondary school. Your child is passionate about it. Then the school will offer your child a place ahead of the PSLE results. However, your child needs to have the uh, necessary PSLE exit qualifications to go to the school because certain schools like the IP schools, they, there's the IP program. So if your AL score falls below 10 or 11, then you're not going to be able to be offered a place in the IP program. So we need to consider that as well when we're applying for these schools for our children. So that's also a consideration that the secondary schools do. So does my child have the talent? Am I able to have the commitment and the passion for that particular DSA? Because once you are in the DSA area, it is a uh, follow through over the four years. I've heard of um, children who have gone for the IP program, the six years. They have gone for the DSA. They have gone in to the IP program. And after the second year, they want to leave. Now, then that's not possible because if you have opted to go in under the IP program, the expectation is that you will complete the six years, right? So the secondary schools that you, you go for DSA for, they'll give you more information in that. Or you can check with your child's uh, teachers, we will advise. So what is the timeline for DSA then? Um, 
after you receive the uh, PG QR codes on the schools, you can start to find out more about the specific areas that the schools have that will enrich your children's interest. There's a DSA secondary school portal that will be open. We will send you the information. Um, Parents, this is for P6 children only. So the P5 parents, um, then how does this DSA affect me now? Well, you have one year, a head start to find out more about all these schools and prepare your children if they want to go for the DSA. Okay? So sometime in May, the DSA portal open, you will be receiving uh, uh, calls from the schools if you're shortlisted, and then you can rank your choices. Okay? And on the DSA, or rather on the PSA result day, you will get information of whether you're successful and whether you're going for the DSA program. Okay? So I will send you the website as well, and you can find out more from the MOE website on the DSA information for 2023. Um, just a note on um, the Singapore Sports School and, uh, and SOTA, School of the Arts. For these two schools, these two specialized schools, the DSA process is not within the DSA framework. Right now, if your child uh, wants to go to the Singapore Sports School or wants to continue in School of the Arts, um, you will have to start calling up uh, Sports School and SOTA to find out more. Because for Sports School, there needs to be trials of the child's uh, sporting skills. For SOTA, there's a need for pre-interviews and preparation of portfolios. So if your child has interest in SOTA, uh, do let the form teachers know. Uh, we will try to advise. We will get our art teachers to help with their uh, portfolio right, curating. For those going for the sports school, um, do check with the sports school if their auditions are upcoming and then prepare accordingly to their schedule. Okay. So with that, um, we'll move on to the next segment. It's about 5.20 now. Um, let's give ourselves about five minutes okay, to uh, head up because the form teachers are also attending the webinar at this moment. Okay? So uh, I will show you the codes for, these, uh, for your child's uh, classes. Uh, if you have it, after this, you can pop over to the rooms. Um, just a note to uh, the form teachers, um, uh, do take note, it's uh, almost 5.20. We will end the uh, session by 6 o'clock. Okay. Um, parents, uh, if the form teachers are not able to answer all your queries, um, they will take it offline and get back to you right on another day. Okay. So with that, uh, thank you, parents. Thank you, form teachers. And uh, do have a good evening right, uh, at home and have a nice weekend. Okay, parents. Thank you for your time. Hope all of you are having a great week after the Chinese New Year break. Okay, so I'm Mrs. Avery Neo. I'm your form teacher, and uh, this is my second year with them. And uh, together with me, I'll be having my co form teachers. Okay, okay, so Mrs. Chan and Mrs. Leong are co form teachers this year. Okay, if you can open the gallery view, you can actually see them live. Otherwise, we will depend on the photo. Okay. So, uh, yep, this will be our subject teachers. And these are our mother tongue teachers. Okay, so I think this picture says a lot. It encompasses a lot of the programs and activities that we had last year. Okay, and we are very glad to really have these two years to bond and really know your, your children. And uh, just now, Mrs. Pei mentioned about the joy of learning. And Mr. Chia also mentioned about how his secondary school students were really enjoying their time so much in school that, you know, they are internally, intrinsically motivated to participate and learn. Okay, so that is something which I think is very important. And as a form teacher, I would like all of you to join me in encouraging your children to enjoy their learning, not just uh, in their academics. Okay, they should also use this childhood period to you know make friends build rapport with others learn a lot of uh, social skills life skills and how to manage their emotions okay and cope with life's up and down 
Okay, so we are going to share about our class slogan, some communication channels, our classroom routines, subject expectations, and then we'll move to our Q&A segment. Okay, so this is our class slogan. Our children came up with it. And uh, credits to uh, Gabby, okay, for designing our class logo to go with the slogan. Okay, diligence leads to brilliance. <clears throat> Okay, so this is our communication channel. First and foremost, right, Parents Gateway is what has taken over all the hard copy letters which you used to receive last time. So most of the school letters and updates like the WA, um, subclass, class and things like that that requires your response are usually on Parents Gateway. So I would like to just remind all of you to set the Parent Gateway notification to a prompt to prompt you to check and for any new updates. Okay, and our students' handbook is also one uh, way which uh, we can get the students to record their homework, important things which they need to communicate to you. Okay, <clears throat> and I placed this class dojo, uh, I bolded the class dojo because uh, personally, this is my preferred form of communication. Okay, because uh, like what Mrs. Pei said earlier, sometimes we are in class and we may not be able to be with our laptops and open up the email to respond fast enough. Yeah, and I know sometimes... Uh, we really, really want to respond as quickly as we can. So uh, it will be easy if you can dojo me. I will take some time in the morning to check the dojos. <clears throat> and talking about morning updates, right? If uh, your child is unwell for the day, we hope that you are able to at least drop me a dojo message and let me know that he or she will not be coming or intending to see doctor or just uh, self-medicate at home. Okay, but I really need uh, your cooperation to just drop me a message so that we will be able to account for the whereabouts of the child. <clears throat> okay. And also, if you need to uh, approach any of the subject teachers or myself, I think at the beginning of the year, we also had the parents' newsletter, okay, the class newsletter where you can find our email. Okay, if you cannot find the newsletter, you can actually go to our school website. I believe the school website has all the subject teachers' email address. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the classroom routine. Okay, we hope that all children will be punctual for the morning assembly. Okay, morning assembly will actually do flag raising, sing our school song on Mondays. Okay, and highlighted in yellow will be the reporting venue for Tuesday and Wednesday, and the rest of the Monday, Thursdays, and Fridays. In our school handbook, uh, we have mentioned that the flag raising starts at 7.30, but uh, I would like to just make it clear that 7.30 will also mean the start of the um, school song uh, national anthem, okay? And between the school gate and our classroom, the students actually need some time to go all the way to their classrooms, especially if our classroom is at level four. Mm, and they will also need time to do their wipe down, to settle down. So uh, if that's possible with you, please send your children in earlier. <clears throat> Uh, we, hope, we hope that the students will be able to settle by 7.20 so that they will be prepared to start their school day, okay? And uh, we also want to remind that students are actually supposed to do a silent reading as part of the routine before they start their school day. <clears throat> okay, so as mentioned earlier, absence from school. So other than informing me on dojo, we will have the children uh, submit their MCs and parents' letter to us when they return. Okay, and for homework, which they have missed, okay, uh, we actually have an absentee tray in school. So your child will actually automatically go and pick up their homework and schoolwork. Mm. And they will complete it at home, okay, and uh, return to us for marking. <clears throat> so moving on to the subject expectation. So I'll present on behalf of the English and Maths teachers. Okay, so for English, inculcate in every child a love for reading and appreciation of a variety of genres. So as a form teacher, when I'm in class, I actually see uh, that Miss O has penned down a lot of uh, genres and recommended storybooks according to the topic of the Stella that they are at, for example. Okay, so reading widely is actually a very, very important <coughs> skill that, that allows the children to go beyond the learning in the classroom. And we also want to nurture our students to become confident speakers, okay? 
and writers in a language and rich environment. And also develop in students the thinking skills to make critical judgments necessary for the globalized world. So these are some of the ways we expose our students to the language. Okay, we have the so-called Stella units, the worksheets that you all sign. Okay, readers with accompanying learning sheets for each unit, strategies that include shared learning, KWL, and retelling. Okay, and for compo writing, there are situational and continuous writing practices for them. Okay, we also have the weekly spelling and dictation exercise, as well as the supplementary worksheets on vocab, grammar, and reading comprehension skills. Okay, moving on to math subject expectations. Okay, students are actually introduced to a variety of strategies to solve problems. Various strategies like guess and check, making supposition, draw models, work backwards, simplifying the problems before after concept, restarting the sorry, restating the problem. Okay, so if you have been uh, going through with your student, your children, and revising the maths with them, I guess uh, you can get your your children to point out to you what are some of the strategies that they are good at using or their areas for improvement, okay? Understanding and understand, sorry, identifying and understanding the key information in the question stem is also one very important thing which we will get the students to, you know, strengthen, okay? Maybe through underlining, highlighting, okay? And also to make time practices during past PSLE, to do time practices using past year PSLE and shared school practice papers. <coughs> Okay, so these are the subject expectation for maths, factual fluency, addition, multiplication, accuracy in mental calculation. And uh, these are the papers, paper one and paper two. Okay, for calculators, right, it is uh, used only in paper two. And I think by this year, our maths teachers will actually be checking the calculators to ensure that they are SEAB approved. Okay. Okay, I'll hand over to Mrs. Leong, who is our co-form, and also the science teacher to share with you the subject expectation for science. Hi, good afternoon, parents. I hope you can hear me clearly. I'm Mrs. Leong. I have been teaching them for two years. Ah, you have skipped the slide. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Leong. So for the science expectations is uh, based on the word care. So we seek to inculcate curiosity and creativity because we want our students to be able to communicate confidently about the science concepts they have learned, right? And I need them actually to be very active and independent in class, to be able to raise questions, of course, politely, and to reflect on issues once it's raised, especially uh, for subjects like global warming, uh, environmental sustainability, which is part of the coming topics. So if they can raise questions and reflect on this kind of worldwide issues, not just Singapore, it will help in answering some of the concepts in the exams question as well. We are supposed to become resourceful and responsible problem solvers, being able to source for information and using data and evidence to problem solve. Being a logical and critical thinker is part of having an inquiring mind. And all of us here hope to have our students having the care, uh, uh, care attributes. So the science assessment format for prelims and PSLE are as follows. They will still have booklet A and B with 28 MCQ questions for with two marks each, 56 marks with open-ended questions ranging from uh, 12 questions to 13 questions for booklet B with 44 marks in total. And they have to do this in one hour, 45 minutes, both booklets A and B. So since uh, Mr. Chia has mentioned that we have done away with mid-year exam and SACA uh, exam as well, this has been replaced with WA1 and WA2, which is upcoming. For WA1, it will be held on the 28th of February for math, for science. And these uh, WAs are meant for students to identify their learning gaps and to review and revise their areas for improvement. This kind of small assessment, uh, bite-sized assessment, is very useful 
for them to learn how to become independent learners. Classroom learning strategies that are useful in class that I use all the time with the students are concept mapping. So for every topic, they have to learn uh, how to map all the key concepts that they have learned for that unit down into one map, right? So by the end of the chapter, they will have this kind of a summary of all the ideas they have learned and they can remember using uh, just by reading one or two words in the concept map, the whole string of concepts related to it should be uh, recalled. So we also do demonstration where some experiments, which is a bit uh, dangerous or challenging. So the teacher would do a demonstration. Where possible, we will uh, encourage our students to investigate on their own. And uh, we have model making exercises where the children are encouraged to make uh, a model of a plant transport system when they were in P5, a cell model. And for P6, we even asked, I have asked my students from 6D to make a roller coaster to demonstrate the use of uh, potential and uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, and all the other sort of energy. Of course, there will be SLS lessons where, when the need arises. Being able to apply process skills to answer questions is very important especially for answering uh, booklet B. So we use the claim, evidence, and reason method, the CER method to answer uh, science questions. So the science teacher in class are supposed as me, we're supposed to guide them on using this technique in answering questions. And uh, they are encouraged to write all these notes inside their green notebook and all the children will be tested from the science teams from P3 to P6, right? So it's very important for the students to revise their P3 and P4 work, especially because the science syllabus is a spiral thing. So they have learned energy in P4 for light and uh, heat, and this is repeated this year for energy, right? So they have learned about animals and plants in P3 and 4, Again, this is repeated in adaptations for the next term of concepts that are going to come up soon. Okay. And I think I will hand over to uh, Mrs. Chan, who will take over for the expectations for mother tongue languages. Hello, uh, Simon, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Mrs. Chan, okay, I'll share a little bit on the mother tongue languages expectation. So actually, our most um, important expectation and our objective is to instill the love for mother tongue and culture for all the three mother tongue groups, including Hindi language. And also to want to nurture the students to become a self-directed learners, to take ownership in learning mother tongue. So we hope that besides the, uh, the two periods or three periods a day in school where they have contact with mother tongue languages, I hope that when they go home, parents also can inculcate an uh, environment whereby they can continue to learn and uh, appreciate mother tongue in different ways. Okay? We also like to co-create a vibrant learning environment to discover the joy of learning MTL. For MTL, we, we also uh, have different activities to make the learning enjoyable. Of course, this one, we also need the support of the parents okay, to continue to uh, inculcate such a love for the mother tongue language so that their learning will be extended. And then, of course, for languages, we emphasize of listening, speaking, reading, writing, and interaction skills, whereby uh, when you go home, if you are also very familiar with this language, okay, interact with them in mother tongue language, uh, let them in contact, listen to some mother tongue, maybe music, or watch some educational mother tongue um, programs, uh, allow them, or bring them to the library to read some uh, mother tongue um, storybooks or magazines or whatever so that they are constantly in contact with the mother tongue language and somehow uh, they will, then, then they will have a chance to, to grow and love for this language. So, so we will expose the language to ICT tools, programs and strategies. For example, we have this extensive reading program, this writing program, e-oral packages. We also have focused comprehension worksheets of course, we also have these time practices 
using our past year PSLE and shared school practices papers like all the other subjects. So these are the, um, the for the use of the SEAB approved dictionary, especially for uh, Chinese language. I think mother uh, Malay language also, they can use dictionary. Uh, please go to this website to look at the approved dictionary because I know that some of the um, bookshops, they sell different types of dictionary. Not all the dictionary, e-dictionary are approved um, during examination. If the children bring in e-dictionary that is not approved, they are not allowed to use it during examination. So it's better that they check already, after that confirm that it's approved, bring to the school, and then we will have this um, label with the school chalk to paste onto the East Dictionary to allow them to bring in during the examination time. And only composition is allowed to bring in e Dictionary. Other than that, the other language news, we are not allowed to bring in any dictionary for um, the testing. Okay, so uh, same thing, okay. For higher mother tongue, it's the same. Okay, only composition are allowed to bring in e dictionary. So expectation e oral is two part. Okay, to reading aloud something what we are doing for primary one to primary four. Conversation, watch a video, and then they have to engage a conversation with the examiner, and they have to share their opinions and elaborate on the on the theme itself. That's why it's very important that the children must be very confident in conversing in their mother tongue language. Okay, parents, now it's time for our Q&A. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, maybe you can just unmute. Okay, if there are any questions which are not so convenient to like, ask directly because it's more of like regarding your child, uh, I would urge you to write to us via email or class dojo. Mm. But if they are like general questions, uh, I think you can just unmute yourself to ask and we'll try to answer them. Otherwise, we will collect, collate and reply you. Yeah, uh, my question is like uh, on the assessment uh, period, uh, they also have all the regular school activities like uh, the supplementary classes and uh, PCA, everything. So uh, the children are getting tired, like uh, we don't find any time for them to prepare actually, because when they are back home, they are already drained out and uh, uh, we as parents, we could not impose anything on them. Even now that happens, but now it is coming. But during the assessment period, uh, like uh, for example, the first exam falls on uh, Tuesday. So after the English, then they'll be having CCA and that day is gone. Like after CCA, they come back and they could not manage with doing anything apart from the homeworks, day to day homeworks. So uh, on the whole, on the uh, uh, full, uh, on the regular days also, we see like kids have time only to do the two lap uh, homeworks and other stuff. So just wanted to check like uh, how come we can manage the time for extra studies or uh, other than that school thing. So you are asking whether the child can manage to do revision, manage time better? Yes. yes. Yeah, how to manage uh, time better in order to find time to do a uh, revision to do better and overall parent of British is it is that the question that's the question yes. ah yes so you see at primary six uh, we still have a syllabus to complete and uh, for example for maths and science mm -hmm. these are skill-based knowledge-based content-based content heavy and we have to complete by let's say uh, June, latest August, July, mm -hmm. you know. So all the topics that we want to finish have to be compressed within a shorter time because PSLE starts in September, right? So in other words, we have to move a little faster and therefore the work comes fast and furious and that is unavoidable. And so most of our teachers are very experienced in able in guiding our students to reach their potential in all the subject areas, mm -hmm. okay? So, but uh, 
the emphasis, the de-emphasis from the government on the assessment mm -hmm. also plays a part. Mm -hmm. We do not want to uh, pause our CCA or our school programs mm -hmm. just so that the students can prepare for the exam. And that will defeat the purpose of taking away the SA1 and moving towards weighted assessment. So the weighted assessment is actually a bite-sized assessment, maybe ranging from 30 marks to 50 marks, right? Different subjects have different, right, Mrs. Chan? Yeah, so some subjects is uh, testing about 40 marks, some about 50, mm -hmm. some even lesser. So it is a very small size paper. Mm -hmm. It is not uh, so intimidating that you need to stop revise thoroughly because it's more like a checkpoint for us to see how well the students have remembered their past concepts mm -hmm. and whether they can cope with what they are learning currently mm -hmm. and whether we need to do revision for certain topics that mm -hmm. we notice that the children in the class are not doing so well in. Mm -hmm. So it is, a, I think, a national move towards uh, bringing back the joy of learning and de-emphasizing on assessment. I hope the parents are with us lah, mm. in this way. I hope I answer your question. Uh, but towards the middle of the year, I think there will be no more CCA. The P6 children will stand down from CCA and that will have one day free for them, Tuesday. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That will help. But you have to wait until mid-year because there's still nationals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, one more question, like this is the common question, like uh, I trust uh, from what from uh, Ruti's point of view, like what he's, uh, uh, how he's handling in the school, uh, I believe that uh, the teachers are uh, really doing a great job. Uh, so I'm satisfied with 100% on that. But just a, a small I, advice from you teachers, like uh, uh, well, how about this uh, tuition culture? Like, apart from this, tuition. tuition and the stressing on that too, is that really needed for the kids or the school uh, coaching and the teaching is uh, more than sufficient? I think tuition is really very dependent on your family, mm -hmm. right? Because the school, like you say, already giving a lot of help to the students, covering mm -hmm. syllabus, identifying areas for improvement, helping the child close gaps. Mm -hmm. However, if you feel that your son or daughter at home needs more guidance, mm -hmm. and uh, if you are able to provide that guidance and that constant close monitoring at home mm -hmm. to help them close gaps, mm -hmm. that will be the best. Okay. Parental support and parental affirmation is really very important for a P6 student. Mm -hmm. There's nothing beats a parent saying you have done well Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of you, yeah. right? But if you feel that, that is, you have work to do and you have not enough time for this, maybe you want to seek uh, outside help to mm -hmm. provide further support for your child. Mm -hmm. Then you have to discuss with your child mm -hmm. and maybe your spouse and see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, please. Hi, Mrs. Neo and teachers. Hi. Hi. I would like to check, will there be any supplementary lessons during the school holidays, like the March and... June school holidays? March? Don't have, right? Yeah, but definitely June there will be. The schedule, if there is any supplementary, will be given to the students. Oh, um, so when will the schedule be out for the supplementary uh, soon, lessons? Uh, if it's March, would it be it's definitely soon. Two? I mean, like uh, for, for, for the June supplementary classes. Yeah, definitely it will be the, in the keeping in touch. You know, the letter to parents. Okay. Okay, yes. so but there's no supplementary lessons for the March school holidays. Uh, not that I know of for March. Okay. But can. definitely for June, there will be. Okay. Ken, thanks for the confirmation. Thank, thank you. Okay, parents. Uh, for the keeping in touch letter, right, you have one per term. And that actually covers the school programs for the entire term, including the school holidays tagged to that term. So I believe uh, for... The June subclass schedule, okay, that one will be given to you all in the parents letter for term two. Yeah. Okay, so uh yeah, so uh we do understand that sometimes uh if it's very difficult to coordinate like between the subject teachers. Okay, yeah, so let me uh tell you a little bit more about this uh 
we have a whiteboard in class where all the subject subject teachers are supposed to list the homework at the side. So for example, maths will put down two worksheets. And then if I see I'm the science teacher, I will tell them that I'm giving you this worksheet, maybe you hand up two days from now. And then the English teacher should put there as well. So all of us put our list of homework on the board and then the, par the teachers who come in are supposed to look at it and manage this workload. However, sometimes uh, it's not because the teacher didn't manage the workload, it's because sometimes the students pile it up. And then after that, they, <laughs> they suddenly realize that, you know, I have so much work that I haven't finished and I owe my teacher this, that and that. So they try to finish it all the night before. And then uh, some teachers will say, okay, you go back, I give you one more day. And then after that, they will try to hand up the following day, clashing with new homework that is coming in. So homework given actually should try to finish within one day or two days. If not, it will, it will you know, compile and become a huge load for the kids. Sometimes I have to write off homework because the children just cannot cope. Okay, so just now I was trying to uh, mention that I think our students and teachers have built rapport. So some days it's like what I say, a bit difficult for the different subject teachers to like coordinate or oh, today I give one piece, you don't give. Uh, it's very difficult for us to do this. And the homework usually accompanies and aims to, you know, reinforce what I was being taught that day. Yeah, so we will try our best to manage the workload if the student is really unable to complete it. I think the teachers will be understanding. But we also want the students to also uh, instill a sense of discipline and also try not to hold on to their work for too long because we all know very well that uh, the work will actually pile up. Yeah, so I think we have reached the maximum time for our Q&A. And uh, I really, really know that some of you do have questions for us. Uh, please uh, message in the class to Joe or email them to me. Okay, thank you very much for your support and time, to, uh, parents. And uh, with this, I'd like to end the Zoom meeting. Okay, thank you very much, everybody.